In this week's video, we'll review a wide array of economic and stock market data to see what we can learn about the big picture. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get right into it and get started. It's a weekly chart, a measure of market breadth, NYSE stocks greater than their 50-day exponential moving average. It's been approximately 50 weeks since the March 23rd low of 2020. We're looking at the rate of change for this indicator. See this big spike here after the low in March of 2009. This is the S&P 500 where my cursor is. Similar spike or rare spike after the low in 2020. The third highest spike on the chart comes in 2003. And in each case, we'll be looking at the apex for the 50-week rate of change here where my cursor is. This is a blown-up version of the present day here. We're looking at all of the data that we have going back to 2001. The three biggest spikes on the chart, the apex occurred on May 30th, 2003 in the first case, September 22nd, 2009 after the financial crisis, and in the present case after the March 2020 low, the apex occurred thus far, which is a key part, on March 5th of 2021. Thus, it might be helpful to ask an answer. How did the S&P 500 perform walking forward after the apex in this case and this case? From a long-term perspective, the answer is quite well. In the 2003 case, between the date of the signal May 30th, 2003, and the peak in October of 2007, the S&P 500 gained an additional 62 percent in the september 22nd 2009 case that's right here where my cursor is we did experience a 4.58 percent drawdown after this date but the longer term outlook pretty exciting 168 percent this 4.58 percent represents the maximum drawdown looking out one year from the date of the signal and if you look more closely at this chart here this is a Nordique phase case here. Date of the signal, we get some nice gains. They occur over several months. And then we have a sharp decline, flash crash 2010, and we give it all back and then some. That's the bad news. The good news is from the date of the signal, really good things happen for a long period of time. Long period of time in this case is measured in years. It's the NASDAQ volume momentum oscillator. We've covered this in the past. We have something a little bit different here. We have this rare spike that occurred recently, and then we dropped all the way down to the lower green line. First thing that should jump off the page here, this spike never happened in this entire area here. The last time this indicator was up in this area here, where it was earlier in 2021, we have to go all the way back to the 1982 to 1992 window. If you know your market history, that's not a bad window to be comparing the present day with. As you can see here, walking forward from 1992, we never get a move like this, going from the upper green line to the lower green line. How many times did it happen in this box here? And how did the stock market perform walking forward? The answer is there were five previous cases. They occurred between 1983 and 1991. Walking forward from the date of the signal, which is similar to this point here, March 10th, 2021, the S&P 500 posted very satisfying long-term returns. Two years from the date of the signal, the average return roughly 32%, three years out 38%, four years out 58%, five years out, almost 74%, six years out, 100%, seven years, 144, eight, 186, nine, 222, and 10 years from the date of the signal, on average, the S&P 500 tacked on an additional 250%. However, if we look at the left side of the chart, it's not too surprising that in some cases, the maximum one-year drawdown from the date of the signal was quite painful. 1983 case, over 9%. 1990 case, 16.9%. Average drawdown looking out one year, a little bit over 5%. The median drawdown, much more attractive, roughly flat. 
Keep the NASDAQ volume momentum oscillator in mind. We will revisit it at the end of the video. The S&P 500 printed a new all-time closing high on Thursday, March 11th. IEF Treasuries relative to SPY, the S&P 500 ETF, posted a new low. It's the lowest point the ratio has been since the market bottomed on March 23rd of 2020. Intuitively, this tells us that IEF is not really doing a whole lot relative to SPY. If we want to flip the script and think about the attractiveness of stocks relative to bonds, as you might guess, SCHX intraday on Thursday, March 11th, 10.13 a.m. This is a consolidation box here that started in February, broke out of that box intraday, and the prior day on March 10th, we closed above the consolidation box. Talked about the 10-year yield in last week's video, 38.2% retracement from this A to B move. This would be point A. This would be point B. We have stalled in the general area, but the jury is still out. But this could act as potential resistance. This is the Fibonacci ARC tool available on StockCharts.com. It takes the concept of retracements and adds in a time element. So if we're looking at the retracement on 10-year yields on a weekly chart from this peak here that occurred in 2018, so this would be point A, this would be point B down here. From a time and price perspective, this is a normal retracement. You can think of this as somewhat of a moving target for the first retracement level. This would be the 50% retracement, and this would be the 61.8% retracement. You can see two of the three concentric circles here coincide with natural areas of possible resistance for yields. What once acted as support where my cursor is here in 2012, 2013. What once acted as support here, 2016. You can even make an argument that it was relevant in 2015 here very relevant on the way down in terms of a stall what once acted as support may now act as resistance just as these concentric circles may act as possible resistance all resistance is possible resistance and all support is possible support using those terms helps us keep an open mind about what's going to happen in this area you can pause your video player here, but common economic sense tells us that for the most part, when interest rates are rising, that should be good for the stock market. And that's typically true longer term. Shorter term, when we see fast moves like this, rapid moves like this in interest rates, it's not unusual for the market to get a little unsettled. But as this table shows here, the S&P 500 has posted solid annualized price returns during increasing interest rate cycles. Average gain for the S&P 500, 15.1%. We've talked a lot about growth versus value. The value of showing this chart here, or the added value, no pun intended, is it shows us a little bit longer term look of the Russell 1000 value index divided by the Russell 1000 growth index. You have to go all the way back to this period here in the early 2000s to see something that possibly might be similar to what we're experiencing in the present day. You can see on this reversal here, good things did happen for a long period of time. It's also possible that this is just another head fake like this or this. However, Notice the dislocation here, and then you get a sustainable reversal. None of this in here is really a dislocation until we get here and mainly here. Not unusual to see a reversal after a sharp waterfall move like this. All of that is to be determined. Pause your video player here, a little bit more information on this topic, and better yet, just Google this title here and find the article on Bloomberg. There's another Bloomberg article that you can find by Googling the title on your screen. 
Key takeaway, quote, massive pent-up savings, unquote. Not only in the U.S., U.K., Japan, Germany, France, China, Spain, and Italy. These two charts were taken from the irrelevant investor. One comes from Barron's. The other one comes from the J.P. Morgan Guide to Retirement. The takeaway on the left side, Americans have saved about $1.8 more than they otherwise would have since the pandemic began. This is the real world and the stay-at-home environment. This is the previous trend. This is just pointing out here that it's highly unusual during a recession to see a spike like we've seen in the personal savings rate. We all know government stimulus around the globe is playing a gigantic role here, but nonetheless, these are the numbers and these are the numbers. Consumers have extra cash in their bank accounts and pent up demand after staying home at an irregular rate over the past year. President Biden signed the latest round of stimulus into law this week. Recent survey, responses in the survey showed that half of 25 to 34 year olds plan to spend 50% of their stimulus checks on stocks. Even the 35 to 54 year old group, 37% of their checks they're planning to put in the stock market. This is in addition to the savings that we already have looking in the rear view mirror. This is non-farm payroll employment. This is the S&P 500 on the bottom of your screen. We put Bollinger Bands around this data set here. You can see as the stock market is peaking in the year 2000, we're above the upper Bollinger Band. And then we get inside of the Bollinger Bands, eventually cross the center line and then don't cross that center line again in 2003 as the stock market's bottoming. Similar situation here. Notice how we're above the upper band. We start to kiss it, then we drop below it. That somewhat coincides with the peaking process in the S&P 500 where my cursor is. This point down here is similar to this point here, 2009, 2010. We get back inside the bands and eventually Recapture the center line. Something very, very similar happening here. Stayed above the upper Bollinger Band during this big move. Went through it. This is obviously hot knife through butter. But similar to these turns here and here, we're now back inside above the lower Bollinger Band. And it's possible in the months ahead that we will clear the center line. In terms of what could happen walking forward, you can find this tweet on the CCM Twitter feed. This data set looks at employment. This data set looks at unemployment. Very, very similar concepts here. Unemployment rate starts to drop here. Notice the center line, 1992. Come down here, dot com bust. The unemployment rate starts to rise goes above the center line and eventually goes above the upper Bollinger Band, drops back below that center line, calendar year 2003. And then as the stock market's peaking down here in 2007, we cross back above, back below here in 2010. And we have a very, very similar look in the present day. From a long-term perspective, 1992, good things happen in the stock market. 2003, Good things happen in the stock market. 2009, 2010, the green box. Good things happen in the stock market. This box, this box, and this box, similar to this look here, where we're now below the center line. None of this predicts anything like the previous cases. It simply speaks to the probability of good things happening in the stock market relative to the probability of bad things happening. You can pause your video player here. Very, very similar concepts. If you know your economic history, we have weak industrial production in the early 80s and things start to improve in 1982, 1983. Economy is weak in here, starts to improve in 1991, 1992. Get weakness here, a recession with the dot-com bust, and we see improvement on the other side. Weakness here in a recession, 
with the financial crisis, start to see improvement in industrial production here in 2009, 2010. Here's our weak look. Here's our improvement in 2016. If you know your stock market history, 1983, walking forward longer term from 1991, 2002, 2009, and 2016, those are good risk reward entry points, especially looking out a few years. This cross here, this cross here, this cross here, and this cross here, you can make an argument similar to the recovery that we've seen in industrial production thus far. It's a weekly chart of the Dow Jones Sector Titans 30 Index. 30 leading companies in the basic resources industry. Pretty self-explanatory here. Economy starts to improve in 2003. Let's see what happens here. Then we have the financial crisis up in this area here. And this is a very prolonged period, a difficult period for this industry in terms of pricing. The index makes a high here in 2008, comes back up, gets rejected here. If you know your market history, this is right around the time of the European financial crisis, intraday reversal on the S&P 500 here. But this index really never can right itself. And that says a lot about where we are in here relative to where we are today. We go on to make a much lower low in 2016. Come up here, we're able to break above the trend line, make a higher low, break above the trend line, and then exceed this high here. Right now, we have the three probabilistic steps for a trend change. Break of a trend line in here, a higher low relative to this low, and a higher high now relative to this high. Also noteworthy, the 200-week moving average. Look at it here. Contrast that in here, and now it's starting to turn back up, and we have price above an upward sloping 200 week moving average. A lot of similarities here. Dow Jones World Basic Materials Index. Economy starts to improve after the dot com bust. We break above the 200 week moving average and for the most part stay above it until the financial crisis here. This is a period of consolidation and indecisiveness, resistance. This is a little bit better move here and then a breakout. Markets are about subtleties. This is a subtle difference here relative to this look here. Why? You can see we made a little bit more damage and progress relative to this trend line. We can think of this period here similar to the Seinfeld concept of pushing over the Coke machine. A trend, you have to rock it back and forth. This is where the rocking begins. It's possible that this Coke machine has been pushed over now and the longer term trend will move in this direction. Now we have price above an upward sloping 200 week. Important to note, even when we broke out here, notice this is several months of backtracking. Counter trend move, counter trend move, counter trend move. We've moved a long way here. Would not be shocking if we saw a counter trend move similar to what's over here sometime in the next few weeks or months. Talk about things being different and the possibility of a market, an S&P 500, that looks more like a secular trend, the type of secular trend look that we had let's say from 1995 to 2000. This would tend to align with that. Investment Services Index going pretty much absolutely positively nowhere between 2007 and 2018. This here looks quite a bit different than anything that we've seen dating all the way back to 2002. If the stock market is going to get stronger, this aligns with that theory. It makes sense that investment services would do better in an environment that looks like a strong secular bullish trend. This, much like the secular trend thesis, speaks heavily to demographics. Pretty much everything that we said about the last chart conceptually applies to this chart. The only difference is when they peak. 
As we noted in a recent video, the housing market peaks before the stock market and home construction stocks peaked before the housing market peaked. The longer a market goes sideways, the bigger the move that you can expect to get when you either get a bearish breakdown or bullish breakout. The demographic trends also speak to the bullish breakout in the S&P 500 that occurred in 2013. Notice what happens here. This sure looks like a favorable demographic turn. This price above an upward sloping 200 week moving average looks a lot better relative to this price below a downward sloping 200 week. All of this, we're always asking, does it align with or contradict the things that we've been seeing since the March 23rd, 2020 low? Leisure and entertainment. Look at that 200 week moving average just as the secular bull starts in the S&P 500 index. Get this bullish breakout here, early stages of 2012. Market needs to consolidate its gains. Here's a period of consolidation in here, period of consolidation in here. This is now a bullish breakout. The longer it holds, the more relevant it becomes. This still has some work to do here. Like to see it turn back up as it did here. Now think about what this is here. This is the dynamic leisure and entertainment index. Stock market did quite well from January 1st. 2012 all the way out to the spring May of 2015 hard to make an argument that the market is not bullish about the economy looking out 12 to 36 months the longer this breakout holds the more relevant it becomes a subtle shift on a chart speaks to a subtle shift in human behavior present day look of this chart here looks different than this it looks different than this it looks different than this it looks different than this and it looks different than this peak here in 2007. there is no question that this move here very very similar to this strong move here off of the 2008 2009 lows on a relative basis from a short term and intermediate term perspective banks Financial is doing extremely well. The jury is still out on the longer term perspective. We'll learn something either way. If price can stay above this blue line. And we'll also learn something if we get somewhat of a false breakout look as we did here in 2014. Maximum flexibility. More than happy to own financials. More than happy to take profits. See yearly chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average going all the way back to 1923. This is the Dow here. These are Bollinger Bands. This is the upper band. This is the lower band. This is the center line. 1930 to 1948, long-term period of consolidation. 1964 to the early 1980s, sideways consolidation. Late 1990s until this breakout here. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 2012, 2013, period of consolidation. Notice the look of price relative to the center line and the upper Bollinger Band inside of these boxes looks significantly different than price relative to the center line and the upper Bollinger Band during the secular trends in the stock market that occurred here, here, and it looks like we're in one now. Hard to make an argument that this looks discernibly different from this. You can learn more about secular trends by finding this recent video. You can do that by Googling the title on your screen. You can find it on YouTube. Keep in mind, when we show a chart like this, we're not necessarily saying the Nikkei is the place to be. But this does tell you the probability of good things happening in the Nikkei have improved. This also speaks loud and clear to the theory that you show these tables and the stock market always is higher after five years. It's always higher after seven years and it's always higher after 10 years. Those tables don't help us with anything. Here's a period here where the stock market in Japan 
went absolutely positively nowhere between 1990 and 2020. It's really not safe to assume anything in the stock market. And that includes relative to your long-term retirement plan. Can you imagine the expectations for an investor in Japan right here about what the future looked like relative to what actually happened walking forward? Same is true in the present day. Despite the charts that we have today, we're not making any assumptions about what they might look like tomorrow, next month, or next year. Hard to make an argument that this is not a positive development looking at the Nikkei average in isolation. The longer a market goes sideways, the bigger the move that you can expect to get. You can pause your video player here and look at this a little bit more closely. This is basically the credit markets, JNK relative to IEF. This is a monthly chart once again with Bollinger Bands. The key takeaway on this chart can be seen here. Cross the center line, good things happen in the stock market. Cross the center line, good things happen in the stock market. We recently crossed the center line. What should catch your eye on a chart like this? Something out of the ordinary. This is a very, very low reading. This is a very, very low reading. A low reading, a low reading, a low reading, a low reading. There's only a handful of times we've got a reading this high, this high, this high, this high, and this high, including the present day. A lot of times big moves happen after odd readings. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bullish or bearish, but this type of move here is a pay attention move about the NASDAQ. These are two different versions of the same chart. This is the triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100 relative to SCHX, which is basically the S&P 500 large cap blend. We talked about this before. This is kind of your tech and growth outsized move here. This is your consolidation and now we have a bearish breakdown. This is just a zoomed in version of the same chart. The longer this breakdown holds, the more relevant it becomes. Since we trade the chart in front of us, to get more constructive on tech in general, we need to see the look of this chart change. And that absolutely could happen. In fact, it would be very, very bullish if this breakdown turned out to be a false breakdown and this ratio went on to make a new high. The only reason why we talk about that is that scenario helps us keep an open mind. But that scenario, we don't have anything in hand yet that says that's what's going to happen. Like everything else, we simply trade the chart in front of us. If this breakdown holds, you have to consider the outperformance here. From a risk-reward perspective, when you're outside of this box, it's not particularly attractive. Like everything else, that's a statement based on the chart in front of us. And that's obviously subject to change. I'll let you pause your video player. This is the NASDAQ High Low Logic Index. There's a little blurb about the indicator on the bottom of the screen. This is a rare move here. As you can see, we're looking at data going all the way back to 1982. S&P 500 performance after similar moves like this, lower blue line to upper blue line. Somewhat mixed and really not all that impressive say similar things about the NASDAQ. And tables like this are constructive. They help us keep an open mind about how markets operate in the real world. Look at the percent positives here. Really nothing to write home about. And we've been talking about the Nordic phase for a long time. I think it's probably pretty fair to say the Nordic phase is reflected in this table here. In this case, this case, and this case, the market was higher nine months out relative to one year out. That's the Nordique phase. Also have to keep in mind, in some of these cases, there's a lot of green in these tables. NASDAQ percent stocks making new 52 week lows, March 10th. This is the highest spike that we've seen since the low in March of 2020. That's not overly alarming, but it is a pay closer attention data point. This is NASDAQ new highs weekly going back to 1980. As you can see, we've only hit this upper green line two times, right here and right here. And thus, we've only moved from the upper green line down to the blue line two times. Telling us that February 26, 2021 is similar 
to this move here that ended on November 24th, 1995. How did the S&P 500 and NASDAQ perform walking forward from November 24th, 1995? The answer is quite well. In the S&P 500's case, muted drawdown less than half a percent. The gain, looking out two years, 57.79%. The NASDAQ, not as good, but still excellent, 54%. The drawdown a little bigger at 4.04%. The takeaways here are very, very similar to the takeaways that we've had in recent weeks. There's a lot of concern about the tech sector and interest rates. You can pause your video player. There's really not an outstanding correlation between how treasuries are moving and how tech stocks perform. It is one of many factors to consider. We really don't have to worry about any of these things if we trade the chart in front of us. If tech outperforms again, I can guarantee you this chart will not look like this. And I can guarantee you that this zoomed in version will not be making lower highs and lower lows. Like any chart, no assumptions. Human beings like to extrapolate. They know what's going to happen. We're going to plunge in this direction. That may happen. It may not happen. Let's just see what happens on this chart. Technical analysis is really about subtle shifts and shifts that tell us something about a shift in long-term behavior. Covered this before in the past, February 26th, it's a monthly chart, so we're looking at it as of month end. Equity put call ratio, 10-day simple moving average stayed inside of this box the entire time between the year 2000 and 2020. We broke out of the box or broke down from the box in 2020, and we're still below the box in 2021. Notice this change in character started here right after the massive peak in the end of the dot-com bubble. It doesn't predict anything. It just helps us keep an open mind about the next 20 years possibly looking different relative to the last 20 years. S&P 500 monthly, one comment here. We would like to see RSI get above 70 as it did here in early 2013 or early 2017. This is a positive development, the break of this downward sloping trend line, but we still have not gotten into this look here or this look here. NYSE weekly high low going back to 1980. Only two times in the last 40 years have we moved from this blue line to the upper blue line. Present day case, 2008-2009 case, which is not bad company when we're thinking longer term. Remember, in the early segments of this video, we said keep the NASDAQ volume momentum oscillator in the back of your mind. We covered it earlier. We covered this rare move from the upper green line to the lower green line. And these were the results that we already talked about. And they do an outstanding job helping us with things that are always important. If you're biased in a bearish manner, it's very, very easy to focus on this, 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 and this. But if we think in that manner, and one of these historical cases unfolds walking forward, that wouldn't help us very much. So the 1985 case, the 1988 case, and the 1991 case, 1985, 1988, 1991, 1985, 1988, 1991, they help us keep an open mind about a wide range of outcomes from wildly bullish to wildly bearish. Walking forward from the day to the signal, almost no drawdown at all looking out one year and outstanding gains in these cases. How about on the wildly bearish or realistic expectations end of the spectrum? Well, we also have cases that can help us there. We see yellow, red, and orange. Something that just happened in the present day relative to history is saying it could be very, very dangerous to make an assumption about what any time period looks like looking out maybe one to two years. Under our approach, very, very important that we make no assumptions 
and produce no forecasts. A forecast is something hard. A regular forecast or a hard forecast is a lot different than a probabilistic forecast. And as we know, the proper way to handle all of this is by taking it hour by hour, day by day, week by week, and month by month. If we stay in the now and trade the chart in front of us, we should be able to handle the wildly bullish scenarios, and we should be able to handle the Nordique type or give back scenarios. And we should be able to handle painful drawdown scenarios like the 1990 case. And we all know, in order to handle a wide range of outcomes and trade the chart in front of us, it's extremely important that we head into next week and every week with that flexible, unbiased, and open mind. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any securities or any related financial instruments, nor should any of its content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management LLC or CCM is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.